We've got tips and tricks today. Tips and tricks. Just increase some shutter speed here. This seems really cropped in. All right, so I have a um, <clears throat> tips and tricks. First five things I do specifically related to video when it comes to using an OM-1. Um, and uh, I wanna share this with you. And so these are things that I do as soon as you get the OM-1 that I initially have to change. And some of them are unique to Olympus. I think if you just picked up the OM-1 and you wanna shoot regular video like this, like where it's kind of no fuss, not doing log recording or any kind of crazy stuff, just this, these are the first five things that I do. Okay, number one, first and foremost, this is one of the things that I've found unique only on Olympus, and that is the uh, microphone jack isn't powered by itself. So if you're using something like I'm using now, this uh, Rode, the one that doesn't, what is this thing? The Rode Micro, Video Micro? Um, it doesn't have power, it, it gets the power from the camera. On most cameras, you just plug it into the three and a half millimeter headphone jack or a microphone jack and it works. But on Olympus cameras, that is not powered on by default. And so here's what you have to do. You gotta go to the menu system, go to movies, go over to sound recording, and at the bottom, you'll see where you can turn this on. Make sure that is on. There's a couple times where I've gotten new cameras. This is true for the EM-1 Mark II and EM-1 Mark III as well. I'm sure the EM-1X, I don't know. I think even the EM-5 Mark III, I plugged this thing in and it wasn't on and I had no sound. So that was that was number, number one. Tip number one, turn that thing on. All right, tip number two, something that I have not figured out yet. So if I'm wrong in this, you can please comment below. But the custom modes. Now typically in a camera what I like to do is set my custom one and custom two to like certain photo modes and then like a custom three to video and a custom four to like a high speed video. What I've noticed on the OM-1 so far is you can't save your custom mode um, for video. Uh, in other words, if you have your camera in manual picture taking, there's there's like default uh, video modes or a video setting in manual. Like so in other words, if you're taking pictures and you hit the record button, it'll click into video. You can save that, but I don't want to save that. And I'll talk about why in a second. What I want is my custom one and custom two to be photo modes. Right, so this has to do with the color profile from shooting in raw, yada, yada, yada. And then I want my custom three to be my, my video mode. And I'll be able to toggle quick and back and forth between all three of them. Well, on the OM-1, you can't be in the camera mode and set your settings and then save that as a custom setting. It blocks it out because of the shooting mode you're in. So what I've done so far, and this again, could be another thing where you correct me below, is I set custom one and two to photo mode. And then I just go into movie and set my movie setup so that when I toggle back to movie, that's what it defaults to. The reason why I'm telling you this is because if you go into like manual picture taking mode and you wanna shoot on um, vivid color profile, if you go into movie then, that color profile will follow it. And I don't want that to be the case. Um, I change, I use natural and I, I change some things, which is the next tip. But you wanna save your custom one and two for photos that when you go to movie, it defaults back to what you had last set, which would be your natural profile. Now there's obviously other ways around this. If you shot log or HLG, which requires you to go to the H265 profiles, that might be a bit different story. Um, and of course you can always save your movie settings by going into like a photo mode and then saving it that way. But this is this is what I do, so that that's the next tip. All right, third tip uh, is around that, that color profile. I find in video, if you're not in like great lighting, that the Olympus colors can be a little bit, um, this is some underexposed, is that true? Sorry, I interrupt you guys. There you go. Uh, the Olympus colors can be a little bit crunchy and over sharpened in video. And so I like to shoot the natural profile because I'm not doing a lot of uh, log grading that can be difficult. And I like to make these settings where I bring the sharpening way down, bring the contrast down a little bit and that's what I'm using right now, is I'm using that setting. I think it looks much, much better. And so that's the third thing I do as soon as I get an Olympus camera. I've done this in almost all my Olympus cameras when I shoot video. All right, tip number four has to do with the function lever. Now, another weird thing when you're in movie mode, Olympus has a two dial setup, front dial, rear dial on your thumb. And in movie mode, you can have auto ISO, no problem. But a lot of times, like this, I want to lock my shutter, lock my aperture, and then manipulate ISO. But sometimes, the ISO right now, it's blinking, I have to go and change my shutter. So by default, 
out of the box, the OM1 comes with the front dial, I think, on aperture and the rear dial on shutter. And if you hit the ISO button and try to change your ISO while you're recording a movie, again, this is making changes while you're recording, maybe the, the lighting's changed, it doesn't let you do it. So what I do then is I go in and I change the function lever settings. These are important, assigning that switch is important. So in setting one, it's front dial shutter, I'm sorry, aperture, back dial shutter. And then if mid movie recording, like I am now, I can flip that switch and it goes front dial, uh, I think I have it set to aperture and rear dial is ISO. Or maybe front shutter, rear eyes ISO. But the point is you can have access to your exposure triangle on the fly while recording to make the adjustments through the use of that switch. I know a lot of people have complained about, and I've seen people at Camera Conspiracies complain about the fact that like ISO thing's a problem. You just gotta use the switch. So the, in switch one, shutter and aperture, switch two, it's shutter and ISO, or however you wanna set it, you can assign it. But that's what you do, use that function lever switch for that. It's also worth noting that you can use the function lever switch to turn the power off and on with that switch if you want, because I've complained about in prior videos, the power switch is on the left-hand side of the camera, and if you wanna one-hand it, you can't do that. So you can use that switch instead of, for the reason I mentioned, you can use it for off and on as well. So that's my fourth tip. And then for the fifth tip, it has to do with image stabilization. I'm suffering from it right now, I'm probably in the wrong mode, but there's three modes for image stabilization uh, on the Olympus. One is off, which maybe you wanna do if you're on a gimbal or if you wanna have some of that natural camera shake or you're locked up on a tripod or you're panning or whatever, that's, that's off. <clears throat> Mode number one, which is what I'm using now, uses both digital stab and sensor stabilization. And you can go in and change your eyes or your stabilization sensitivity settings as a part of this. So I think it just increases the crop. That's the downfall of IS mode one is that there's crop. Right now I'm at 12 millimeter, which is 24 equivalent, but it feels like I'm at like 28 or something. It's a little bit tight and I'm having to back up. So that's IS mode one, but that's the mode you probably want if you do like I do where you're walking and talking a lot of times holding the camera because the combination of that sensor stab plus the digital stab makes it better. And then there's IS mode two, which is just the sensor stab, not the digital, which removes the crop uh, but I've found a little bit, it can be a little warpy at times. So you, you gotta watch it. And I think it's lens dependent and those kinds of things as well, but that's what you want. So yeah, those are my five tips and tricks. If you're brand new to the OM-1, if you're shooting video or vlogging like I am, those are the first five things that I change when I get this camera. Of course, there are some things in there where you guys might comment below and say, there's a better way to do this. And if you're watching this video, go read the comment section and see if somebody had any other better ideas on a couple of tips and tricks, but that's what I do. So, uh, yep. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.